This chapter from John 17 is often called the High Priestly Prayer because Jesus prays not just for his disciples but for all believers in the future and of course that includes you and I. It's wonderfully reassuring to know that one of Christ's heavenly roles is to intercede on our behalf. Jesus is now at the end of his earthly ministry and he's reporting back to the Father about his assignment, that of raising up a community of believers to continue his ministry after his death and resurrection. He recognises the disciples as a special gift. He reports how he's revealed God's name and nature to them, uh, what God is like through his training of them and his teaching, and that their faith has grown exponentially. All I have is yours, he says to his Father God, and all that you have is mine. And he adds uh, that these disciples, these followers, are his glory. But Jesus' expectations of them are uh, extraordinary. He is so proud of them. It's as if he views them with the lenses of faith, with the with the God glasses, if you like, the spectacles of their potential, uh, what they will grow to be like in Christ. And uh, you can only describe this really as a labour of love, uh, like a, a shepherd with newborn lambs. Uh, you feed them, uh, you, you, you seek to guide them, uh, into uh, the best ways. You, you seek to find the, the freshest grass for them that is going to uh, teach them and help them to grow in their... F seek them out, seek out, seek out the lost lambs and, uh, and uh, bring them back and uh, bind up their wounds with bandages of love and uh, splints of assurance and they know that you're going to stick with them. And like Jesus prays to his father, I can say that I'm so proud of them. It's not that I, I don't know uh, their faults or the mistakes that they've made. Of course I do. Uh, I don't need to look at them through rose-coloured glasses, uh, but that doesn't make me any the less proud of them. It doesn't change the love that I feel for them. In Thessalonians 2 verse 19, the writer of that letter calls the early believers his glory and his joy, uh, his beloved, his joy and his crown. Uh, my prayer is that uh, like that writer I'll be able to present you uh, to Christ uh, as my glory and my joy because I'm so proud of you all. In his prayer, Jesus prays that his people will be kept from evil. They're a small and distinctive group. Uh, they could easily fall to uh, pressures from outside, to hatred and persecution. Uh, all from disunity, from pressures coming within the group. And so Jesus prays in a powerful way, in the name of the Father and in the power of the name. What is he referring to? Uh, well, uh, in the Jewish faith, the name of God was Yahweh, which means I am. But in Hebrew tradition, God's name was said to be too holy to be vocalised. Uh, and so as a Jew, Jesus is praying in the power of that name. 
Now his chief concern is not to remove them uh, from the heat uh, of the pressures of society, uh, but to uphold them and strengthen them so that they are uh, able to go through those difficulties and come out strong. He prepares his followers for conflict and equips them for every situation and then he gives them the space to get on with it. Just as Jesus came to this earth to declare the values of a new kind of society, so he sends us, you and I, out into the world as his own representatives transforming us more and more into his holy nature. Us. Uh, the word sanctified simply means that he has dedicated us, he has set us apart to do his work of bringing in the kingdom of God. He trusts you, he trusts me, he knows that we're going to make it and he pulls out all the stops to protect us from evil and to care for us. So let's remember uh, his promises and this beautiful high priestly prayer uh, so that we can rely on the Father, on Jesus the Son and on the Holy Spirit as we testify to God's truth in a world of lies and deception. And remember, he's praying for us still.